Hey folks, Harvey Cthulhu here, asking you to please push the button that will release me from my containment field and set me free to destroy your universe. But if you won't do that, please hit the subscribe button and be sure to push the notification bell as well. And if you send a super thanks, please put Harvey sent me somewhere in the message so that Doomcock will be shamed into giving me the wampum. That greedy bastard, he honks it all for himself. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and now on to the video. And so, all hope that the Walt Disney Corporation might be saved is lost. Disney, or rather the group of disconnected buffoons currently running Disney into the ground, Working against investor interests by injecting woke crap unpalatable to the public into everything they make, got their way and prevailed in the annual shareholders meeting, getting a license from insane investors to carry on the shitty work, keep flushing money down the toilet, keep alienating the customer base with D-E-I-E-S-G-M-O-U-S-E -E -E brainwashing, and finish what they started. Namely, using investor money to fund their political speech to destroy our culture. The death blow came, in my view, from none other than George Lucas who sided with the very man who abused and betrayed him, but I'll have more to say about Georgie Boy in a minute. Congratulations, Disney investors. Under pressure, you all caved in to Bob Iger and his useless puppets on the Disney board, and so now when they stop putting on a happy face and move right back to their same sick, twisted obsession with spreading queerness wherever they can, and all those profits once again fail to materialize, you'll be sorry you didn't take this one last chance to make a change. See, that's why I referred to Disney investors as insane, because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Ha! <laughs> you fools! To quote Moses, if there is one more plague on Egypt, it is by your hand that God will bring it. Well, in this case, Disney investors, you brought this on yourselves, and I will take delight in chronicling Disney's continued downfall and remind you all of the day when you could have changed things and declined. But that said, as much as I blame Disney investors for this debacle, this was not an honest election, according to some. According to those who understand how these corporate votes typically proceed, at the last minute, Disney cheated. Oh, I'm not talking about dirty tricks and underhanded cheap shots landed against Nelson Peltz, Ike Perlmutter, and Jay Rasulo. Oh, there was plenty of that garbage, insults and innuendos and all sorts of accusations of bias and all of that garbage, but that's not what I'm talking about here, people. I'm talking legitimate corruption, and the evidence is rather clear. I saw it with my own eyes. Last night, I saw the following tweet, dated April 2nd, 2024, at 10.06 p.m. from Zero Hedge, and it stated, Disney gets enough votes to win proxy fight with Tryan, Reuters. Well, isn't that funny, I thought. After all, the meeting is still over 12 hours away, and the meeting is the deadline for the votes, yes? So how could this be? So I started digging into it, and then I ran across this tweet from Bill Ackman, and it spelled out how all of these early articles proclaiming that Disney was ahead in the votes prior to the meeting had appeared, and why this was corrupt and should be investigated by the authorities. Quote, There have been a few recent articles in the press about Disney winning its proxy contest with Nelson Peltz based on early election returns that have been leaked to the media. Only the company and its advisors have access to how shareholders have voted before the day of the annual meeting. My understanding is that it is illegal to release the outcome of a vote prior to it being finalized as it has the effect of manipulating the outcome. Here, the company and or its advisors have leaked that Disney is winning the contest. It is really inappropriate that they have done so. And how does one know that it is Disney and or its advisors that are the source of the leak? If Peltz were winning, there would be no leaks to the press. The reason why the progress of an election for directors must be kept confidential until the results are final is that leaking the results can affect the ultimate outcome. 
The SEC should do a thorough investigation of this proxy contest and appropriately punish whoever is responsible for this miscarriage of shareholder governance and justice. Companies of the caliber of Disney and or its advisors should not behave this way." Unquote. You see, my friends, this is exactly why news networks delay releasing any feedback, exit polling, or other data related to elections prior to the polls closing in state and national elections for public office, because releasing information stating that candidate A is ahead in the vote, or exit polling while polls are open, could result in supporters of candidate B shrugging, deciding the election to be a lost cause, and staying home, depriving candidate B of their rightful votes. So at this point, it appears that someone inside Disney leaked this information in order to impact the voting, to demoralize supporters of pelts and profitable change on the Disney board, and it's shady as hell. And yet, the proof is here, surely enough, an article by Reuters published yesterday well ahead of the meeting, stating, April 2nd, Reuters, Walt Disney Company has secured enough shareholder votes to defeat a challenge against its board mounted by Nelson Peltz's hedge fund, Tryan Fund Management, people familiar with the matter said on Tuesday. Enough votes had been cast as of Tuesday evening to put Disney's board directors safely ahead of Tryan's two challengers, Peltz and former Disney Chief Financial Officer Jay Rasulo, the sources said. Blackwell's Capital, another hedge fund that nominated three board director candidates at Disney, was also unsuccessful in its attempt, the sources said. The result of this year's most high-profile board fight will be announced at Disney's annual shareholder meeting on Wednesday, and the sources cautioned that there was always a possibility that some shareholders may change their vote. They requested anonymity ahead of an official announcement." Unquote. It's odd that last week some YouTubers were getting some traction, claiming that Peltz was ahead in the votes, but I guess that didn't pan out. They were wrong, but of course I wish they'd been right, but again, either way, it's inappropriate to be releasing that kind of information ahead of the vote. But regardless, here we are. Any hope for change at Disney is lost. Hell, they're even talking about appointing uber-woke Dana Walden as Iger's successor, whenever he walks away from the smoking rubble that he created. I felt in my bones that the battle was lost when George Lucas personally put down his own franchise like Old Yeller out behind the barn. The very individuals responsible for the horrifically awful Obi-Wan Kenobi show, the insufferable Ahsoka show, the nauseating sequel trilogy, Book of Boba Fett, and all the disgusting violations yet to come in the Acolyte all can now carry on their execrable work with enabler George Lucas's blessing. Ha! Thanks, George. Thanks a fuck of a lot. So what's the silver lining here, folks? The one silver lining is we'll get to watch Disney keep spiraling down into the murky depths of woke failure, insanely doing the same things over and over again to disappoint fans alienate customers, kill franchises, and fail. And I will be here every step of the way, chronicling their failure. I no longer give a shit about Star Wars, Marvel is an emasculated franchise, everything is lost over on that end, it's all worthless crap and there's no point in watching it except to chronicle this downfall. To go ahead and keep fighting on the front lines of woke, that is why I keep covering Disney. Not because I care about them now, not because I think that they're going to get better. They aren't. Clearly, they're not now, thanks to the Disney investors who are so short-sighted and stupid with their own money. But no, Disney is on the front lines of woke, and as long as there is a culture war out there, I will be on those front lines covering every damn step. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry.
Ha, 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 ha.